Hello friends, in this video I'll be discussing about the promoter sequence in the prokaryotic transcription and different kind of sigma factors which identifies different kind of promoters under which uh, different genes are transcribed according to the situation. So now let's start with the DNA strand. Here is the DNA strand and it is the 5 prime end, this is the 3 prime end, and this is the 3 prime end, and this is the 5 prime end and let me okay so this is the start sequence that is plus one and upstream to this plus uh, one sequence there is the at, at minus 10 base pair region there is a sequence which is known as the tata box and my at minus 35 base pair region there is another sequence which is known as cat box and these sequences are 80 rich for this tata box sequence the sequence is t t a t a a t and this for this cat sequence it is t t c a c a Okay, so there are 80 rich sequences and these sequences are called consensus sequence and these sequences are recognized by sigma factor. Generally, sigma 70 is responsible for identifying uh, the promoter sequences and do the transcription in the prokaryotes, but there are other different kind of sigma factors are present which uh, identifies different kind of promoters which is very much similar to this concept sequence there are some minor differences and it um, binds to that promoter sequence and uh, transcribes genes which is necessary for the prokaryote at a specific time like you know sigma 28 is responsible for uh, synthesizing uh, genes uh, for this flagella synthesis flagella then uh, sigma 32 is there which uh, express the protein uh, which transcribes the protein uh, the mrna for the protein which is necessary for the heat shock response and there is sigma 38 which is um, uh, which synthesizes mrna during the stationary phase and also synthesizes genes during the oxidative oxidative okay let me write it here somewhere or oh, Oh God, it is not working. Anyways, so let me start it from here again. Um, the sigma 38 is uh, responsible for synthesizing gene that is uh, needed during the oxidative and, uh, and osmotic response, osmotic response. So, you know, uh, we have uh, we, uh, so from uh, from um, though it is already gone, but uh, the sigma seventy is for is the general transcription um, sigma factor which is necessary for the transcription in the prokaryotes, and then sigma twenty eight, sigma thirty two, uh, sigma thirty eight. All these different kind of sigma factors are present, which binds to specific kind of. Uh, different kind of pr uh, promoters and uh, transcribes uh, genes according to the situation needed. So now I'll uh, straight away go to the transcription uh, termination which are still left to be discussed and that is uh, this thing. Uh, there are in the in the in the termination in the termination of the transcription two types of termination we can find one is uh, with the intrinsic terminator sequence that is intrinsic terminator terminator sequence and another one is uh, with this uh, row protein dependent termination all right row protein dependent termination so let's start with the first one this intrinsic termination uh, intrinsic termination and this is a very interesting kind of termination that we can see in case of this uh, transcription mechanism in the DNA uh, there is a specific kind of sequence present which is called the 
palindromic sequence and the sequence is uh, present in such a way that it can form a stem loop structure within its own uh, strand or uh, this or you can also call it a hairpin structure so stem loop or you can call it hairpin uh, structure so when uh, the palindromic sequence is present in the DNA in the DNA suppose this is my uh, sequence present and this is my complementary strand so uh, this is the 5 prime end this is the 3 prime end and this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end so when my uh, this RNA is getting synthesized it will have the uh, have the complementary copy of this palindromic sequence and it will when when the when the when the s mRNA is copying this palindromic sequence it can form a hairpin loop in its own structure and after this palindromic sequence there is a long a a stretch present in the DNA and here it will be T T uh, nucleotides present so if I draw it a bit clearly uh, so then let me take a new page here this is the um, this is the sequence this is the palindromic sequence and here is the complementary sequence and then after that there is a long stretch of AAA in the DNA this is a 5 prime end this is the T T T T this is the 3 prime end then this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end so here is the palindromic sequence present and after that a long stretch of poly A tail is there and uh, this is my RNA this is my RNA which is getting synthesized and it also copies this polyndromic sequence and then afterwards uh, it also you know copies this AAA sequence so what happens when the mRNA has already copied this poly palindromic sequence and suppose here there is my uh, this is my this is my okay let me take a new color uh, this is my RNA polymerase so what happens that when this uh, RNA has transcribed and the when there is the polyndromic sequence and it has already formed this um, hairpin loop and then afterwards this AAA sequence that means it will be U U U in the mRNA because the RNA doesn't um, uh, take the T as the nucleotide as, as the base so instead of T it takes U uh, where A is present in the complementary strand so when the pol wh when the uh, RNA polymerase has already copied this palindromic sequence and there is a long stretch of A so when it encounters this uh, this hairpin structure in the mRNA or maybe you can also say that when the hairpin loop has been formed along with this UU stretch here the movement of this RNA polymer is uh, become a bit interfered because of this uh, hairpin structure and when it has uh, slowed down a bit this AU this AU there is the UU uh, sequence and uh, the bond between A and U is a double bond which is a, a weak bond then when the RNA polymerase has become a bit slow and the U bond is there then the bond breaks uh, from then the AU bond breaks and the mRNA get dissociated from this DNA strand and it is now this uh, 5 prime 3 prime um, mRNA and here when the mRNA dissociates from the DNA 
then the uh, then the this template DNA again renaturates with its original partner, and the transcription process stops there only. So what I was trying to tell you is that this hairpin structure has uh, is there. This is the palindromic sequence uh, present on the DNA, which is getting transcribed by the RNA polymerase, and then there is a long stretch of poly A. So when uh, this palindromic sequence has been transcribed, the mRNA will form this uh, hairpin loop here and it will slow down the uh, movement of this RNA polymerase. And then at that moment, this AU, this bond, which is a very weak bond only, a double bond is there. So it will break and the RNA will dissociate, will fall off from the template DNA and it will be free as the single RNA and then the mm, template DNA which was pairing with the RNA it will uh, again you know uh, form its uh, pairing with the original DNA strand with its partner so in this way this uh, this uh, intrinsic terminator sequence helps in termination of this uh, mRNA transcription and if I want to write down that what is the sequence over here it's quite interesting uh, that this is the 5 prime end and here is the sequence A, T, T, A, C, T, G, G, C. Okay, I'll not get much place here so let's you know, start from here somewhere. So this is the 5 prime end then a T T A C T G G C T C C and then there's a gap and then again G G A G C C T T T T T and this is my three prime end and so the another one is T A a T G A C C G A G G and then it is C C T C G G A A A A. This is my uh, DNA strand and my RNA uh, which will be transcribed. It will be like this that there will be you know for this, I was taking this one as my template. So my RNA will be A U U A C U, and then here it will be okay. So I will start from here, you know. Uh, so I'll get some space. That is A U U A C U, and there is the strand. Uh, there is the stem loop that is G G C U C C and then G G A G C C and then this long U U U strand present so here is the you know this portion is the stem loop structure stem loop and here is the long stretch of u this is the u stretch that i was talking about so in this way this uh, transcription will uh, terminate and in my next video i'll be discussing about this row dependent termination which is a very simple termination process so stay tuned thank you